everybody okay so it is time for your Tuesday art journal prompt and this is the last Tuesday of January and in my art journaling artist uh, group we are going to do also a year-long pro project so I'm just gonna go ahead and do a spoiler here uh, the last Tuesday of each month will be uh, to make your page for that month if you hadn't already uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a page for each month and at the end of the year I have our own handmade calendar. So your art journal prompt for today is what does January mean to you? Okay, what represents January? Something along those lines. Just make a page for January in a calendar. If you, if you are or were making your own calendar. All right, because I want to take these and get these um, scanned for a calendar at the end of the year, I don't want to make them in my book. And the reason is... Like right now, that lays really, really flat. But as this gets chunkier and I get to the middle of my book, it has this bow to it, um, which it has a bow to it. We'll make it not scan as well. I'll lose some of the page or I'll get a shadow. So what I decided to do is I do want these in my art journal, but I've just got some watercolor paper and uh, this is just regular 140-pound water paper, color paper. I took my page and my watercolor paper, and I put it in, and then I just took a regular pencil, and I traced the page. And then I took my scissors and cut it out. So at the end of the year, I can take all these pages, and I can just tip them into my book so that I can put them in later, uh, but when I use them for my calendar, they are going to be free pages. All right. So that is how I'm going to treat my pages. Um, so I'm going to get my stuff together that I'm going to use. Uh, and I will be right back. All right. I've gathered up what I want to use on this page. And I, wa I want to do um, a background with distress inks. And I kind of want to do it in blues, browns, and maybe a little gray. So I've got Vintage Photo, Tita, uh, Salty Ocean, Faded Jeans, and Pumice Stone. And you know what? I'm Now that I'm looking at this, I'm thinking that's not enough blue. So... I'm going to bring in my Dilusions London Blue, okay? Uh, these are all water reactive, so they can all play well together and get me a good background. I am going to put some of these inks on my page, on my, on my craft mat. These are all the colors I just told you I was going to use. Plus, I'm going to do a spritz of this London Blue. And then this is just a water spritzer to spritz it all and get it all liquidy. All right, and that's good and juicy. I'm going to take my page, and I'm just going to pick it up and put it down a couple of times, like so, and then dry it.
me. Once it's dry, I'm just going to do it again. And if you watch Tim Holtz, this is how he does tags. And I just got to thinking, why can't I do it with something much bigger than a tag? Why do I, you know, why limit myself? I saw no reason to. and do it again. And this corner needs a little something, and a little something, and a little something. Dry it again. At this point, I'm just trying to get. At this point, I'm just trying to get all the ink off of here. Um, and one last straw. Okay. So that's layer one. All right, for layer two. Um, I am going to take a, a ranger um, rubber, dabber, what do you call these things? And I'm going to do this again. This one I'm going to take just a couple of these blues. Blue Distress Ink Blue, Blue, and Gray. And I'm not going to add water, but I am going to like blend them in this blender right here and come around my edges so I don't have any white edges. So I'll just pick it up and blend it up. And it's just giving me a little light color. And if it gets too light, just put a little more ink down. And do it again. And blend them together. And go again. All right. And one last time, but this time I'm going to use um, my vintage photo and my edges. So, vintage photo. And for that, I'm just going to come straight off of here, get some ink, and just come right on this very, very edge. All right, and there, you know what? I'm gonna put just a little more brown right there. Just a little more brown in there. And you know what? I think I wanna put just a little more brown right there too. All right, I like it. And there is my background done. So, background, that's it. Hi. 
right, so I've got my background and I want to add a focal point off to one side. And so what I want to do is I decided I wanted to add this face. This is a stencil. It's a Jane, it's one of the Jane Davenport um, products. It came in the paint kit if you're looking for it. I'm just going to take my big brush, um, Faber-Castell Pit Artistic Pen Big Brush Black. And I'm just going to add my lines. Okay, make sure you have everything filled in, and I do. So there's my face. All right, step two is done. All right, so there is my page so far. All I've done is the background and put in the stencil. I want to finish out her face a little bit. Um, mainly what I want to do is give her some hair. So finish the line of her hair. It's going to take the same marker. Uh, and I'm going to go for her part and down like so and then out like so, out like so, out like so. All right, just like that. That's all I'm going to do. Uh, now then, since I am using this, I decided I wanted to use some of my Jane Davenport stuff. So I just went and got my travel bag out with all of this. And I think the first thing I want to do is use my paint over pen unicorn for her eyes. And let's see how it paints over the delusions because delusions of course are reactive so they may Come back up through this. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna find out. They may, they may not. Okay. So there's her eyes. Um, I think I'm gonna stick with these. So I'm going to use the same thing, mermaid paint over pen for her eyes. I'm just darken up the spool a little bit. Just like that. And for her skin, let's go with beach. I'm okay with the, you being able to still see um, the uh, colors underneath. I just want to lighten a little bit so it's a little more skin tone look. And so their face stands out a little more. I'm not actually trying to completely cover everything I've already done. Which is a good thing because I don't know that I really could unless I just flat out gessoed it. I don't want to do that. Okay, 
Okay, I like that. It's kind of got the, like she's got freckles. No, I'm just kind of uh, seeing if any of this will blend a little bit and smooth just a little bit. Also, giving a little highlight by going back over some places a little more. That looks pretty good. Over some lips, I am going to use Starfish. Okay. And now then, let's see. Um, Here's coral. Here's beach. Here's coral. Here's the coral a little bit on her lips. Just a little bit. And just kind of play with the color a little bit. And then also. Just kind of give her a little color in her cheek and color in this cheek. There we go. And use, mm, I'm starting to use reef. I think that would be too dark. So let's use beach for some of the shadows. I know it's a yellow, not really a brown, but I don't want to get too dark. There we go. And since I am staying with blue, let's take the bottle blue and try to give her a little more definition to her hair. Maybe majorly just a little bit. Okay. And I'm keeping this brush really dry, so I'm trying to just barely squeeze to get any in the brush. So I don't want to flood this. Okay. And because it is water reactive, I don't want to put that one together. Um, the one over here has already got water in it. Mm. There we go. This is just a plain water brush. There we go. 
I just want to kind of smooth and spread this without adding any more ink to it. All right, so there's my girl's face. Now I'm gonna put some more glue right here around her face because that would be like the shadow of her hair. And same thing here. Just picked up as much of this and just kind of let it feather out. What I'm doing is I'm just really using the reactivity of this mermaid markers to my benefit so that she's there, but she just fades into the background rather than being um, everywhere. All right, and I like her. I think she looks pretty good. And I like her on the background. Okay. So I am now going to dry this and I'll be right back. All right, I'm just gonna put a few finishing touches on her real quick uh, and then I'll move on to my cloak. So I've got my shine marker. I'm just gonna do this because I want this not to be quite so neat. As they are right now. Alright, and these have a little bit more of a scratchiness to them. Like so. And the same thing, I'm going to come back in with my white pen. And give some movement to her hair there. I'm also going to put some specks on her eyes. So she's got some light in her eyes. And a little bit on her lips and mouth and mouth. All right, just to kind of bring her face to life, just a little bit. And somehow I think I lost an eyebrow. Because uh, she's missing one for sure. So let's make a fade here, right here. And give her that eyebrow she's missing and make this eyebrow match a little more. All right, there, that's better. I don't know how she did, how she lost an eyebrow, but we fixed it. Um, and I think she looks pretty good. All right, so I don't have the quote I found that I want to use in here, so I'm gonna have to go get it, uh, but I'll be right back. Oh, before I do, I'm going to give you a zoom in on her so you can see her a little better. Now that I don't have to worry about my arm being in the way. But uh, I think she's looking pretty good. 
I love her background. I love the colors. Um, and I like her face. Although, looking at it in the camera, which gives you a different perspective, I think I need this right here to be a little darker, but I don't want it to be the same color. So let's take... Let's take, um, this is Siren, and also the, the uh, bottle blue. Let's take those two together, right there, because it might be like a shadow of her hair, and I think that looks better. And now I'll need to blend them together, take my water brush. And just bring them out a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing, I think, down here. Because again, it's going to be kind of in the shadow underneath. So let's take the siren first. Try not to get a lot of ink in the brushes. Some siren and some bottle blue. And bring my water brush to mix them together. And feather them out. I don't think that's much better. I think that's much better. It gives me that shadow up there in their hair that I didn't really have before. Okay, so I like it and uh, let me go get the quote and I'll be back. All right, so now let's add my quote to her. And I found one that says, January opens the box of the year. Oops, sorry, hit the camera. January opens the box of the year and brings out days that are bright and clear and brings out days that are cold and gray and shouts, come see what I brought today. Uh, and it was credited to Leland B. Jacobs. I don't know who that is, but I like that, especially since how it's supposed to be my January page. So I'm just going to start with a regular Sharpie. And the biggest word I want on here across the top is going to be January because this is my January calendar page. So let's start with that. So So there's January, and then opens the box of Year, and I'm not worrying about my stanzas being right. So if you're thinking, well, that's not the way the stanzas would go, I'm not worried about that. And brings.
And here and rings. Page went off. Green greens out days that are cold and And shouts from sea I'm going to go on down here and date it and sign it, even though I'm not actually through. All right, so I'm going to probably, I'm going to stop this and restart it so that um, I can hopefully fast forward that part of me filling in the writing uh, because it will take a little while. And uh, I'm sure there'll be times my hand will be in the way, but such is life. All right, so let me... Uh, let me get you all ready and zoomed in and
And just like we did with the top, I'm going to add some white and a signal pin to just kind of bring out some of the...